Valentino giving me shoes. Well, basically, man, it was Suleiman. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I, I wrote a book. Some people might know that I didn't write a book. Well, I had someone that, that wrote a book about my life about five, six, maybe, no, 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 about 10 years ago. But he didn't really do justice to the book. It was something that I think he just, you know what I mean? It was no no feelings behind it. It was no genuine, you know, it was just like, okay, I'll pay you. you he did his thing and that was it. But one day um, someone commented on my Instagram page about my documentary and, and, and under uh, a post of my documentary. And they was like, look, man, we need a book about your life. So Suleiman hit me up, man. Suleiman been friends for years. Mm-hmm. And he hit me up one day. He's like, look, you know, I'm a writer, man. If you ever want to, you know, I read that comment. So if you ever want to do a book, I'm here. Mm-hmm. But I was like, okay. You know what I mean? He's my friend, he's a homie, but I just don't, like a lot of people said he writers, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then he saw that, I think he gave me some, he actually wrote a few, um, a, a, a few um, things for Oxford University. And mm-hmm. they don't really, they accept him, they, they don't really accept that many uh, writers, anything, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So I think it's about a 10% um, accepting rate or something like that, or maybe lower. So mm-hmm. he got it accepted three times for Oxford University, maybe more. I, yeah. I don't know the exact number. so. When he started showing me some of his work, I was like, wow, this dude from Brooklyn, he's from the hood. Mm-hmm. But on the academic level, he's on a whole, I, I didn't see, I haven't seen anything like that, especially from amongst my peers, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, you know what, let's do it. So when he yeah. started writing and he started showing me like the first couple um, things that he written, the first paragraphs, the first chapters, I was like, man, we on to something. Because the way he writ- written the book is in a style where um, I'm glad that he did it in this format because most rappers or if you notice, in the majority of the rappers, when they come from the music industry and they start doing their autobiographies or their biography, they try to always make it seem like um, it's always too gangster. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like they always try to put emphasis how much of a street dude they was, even with the words, this mother F or this F that. <laughs> Like yeah. you're like, come on, man. We reading a book. We not reading a rap song. Let's. We want to really. We yeah. want to know about how it really goes down. I'm sure you ain't behaving like this in front of your mother mm-hmm. and just cursing and stuff like that. So I'm. But the way he did it, it's a style that it doesn't matter if a person, a street individual, he had background in the hood or he he grew up in the suburbs. He can be a preacher, an imam, Christian, Jew, Muslim. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Everyone would be able to relate relate to the way he written the book. You know what yeah. I mean? It's a style that. Even uh, even professors at universities would be able to teach from this book. That's how he did a great job. So it exceeded my expectations. And when I started reading it, I had to read it from a standpoint of view where I pulled myself away from me reading about my own life. I had to I had to read it as if you know what I mean. This is a story of, of an individual I don't even know. That's how I went into the book. You know what I mean? And I I was blown away. Yeah. I think I, I'm I'm happy that he he came through. You know what I mean? I think um. You know what I mean? From a, you know, right now, in many ways, you know what I mean. Many, many, many avenues we think is important because my story it can teach people. You know what I mean? There's, there's, and like Suleiman once said to me, he said, "Man, there's people that's going through worse than what you went through." He said, "Your life, like what you went through, is like a roller coaster." He was shocked. He was stunned. He said, "But we have to realize there are people that's going through even worse." Reading this book will give them hope. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Reading this book can give someone hope to say, look, wait a minute, man. He went through this. He did this. He did this at that young age. I pretty much have this similar story than him. And, and for those who don't have a similar story, then minds, most people can relate to entertainment. You know what I mean? Majority of people would know the life of an entertainer or, or Tupac. So it touch on every avenue. You know, for me being 13, 14 years old selling drugs, yeah. you know what I mean? There's people that can relate to that who might not, even if they cannot relate to it from a compassionate standpoint of view, they're going to be able to feel it and accept it. And they would be able to make themselves, for example, if there's a person who has children or themselves that wasn't on a block selling drugs at 13, 14 years old, maybe reading this story will make them look at their parents and be more grateful that they had these parents in their life, that they had the life that they had, that it wasn't too hard. So I think it can be lessons for and, and can be taken in so many different ways. I think, man, for me, the the book was therapeutic. It was like therapy for me because I, I really was able to touch on stuff that I try to I, I try to keep hitting. You know what I mean? There were so many things that I, I tried my best to forget about it, but sometimes just you know facing it and explaining and speaking about it can help you get it off your chest. You know what I mean? I was like, man, I finally got these things off my chest. I finally got to tell my story, man. It was, it it was, man, it was emotional. I didn't I didn't expect that it would be. I, I would be so emotional 
you know, on an emotional roller coaster the way I was reading that book, especially when it got to the parts of like the death of Tupac, the death of Gaddafi, the death of my brother, my grandmother. So I was like this, you know, happy yeah. and then like, you know what I mean? So, and I was like, you know what? I'm glad that I was able to get that off my chest. Yeah. Finally. And even to tell my story about Gaddafi, for example, because when you look at the internet, most people only know the story that his mother is pushing, mm -hmm. in which I don't blame her. You know what I mean? Like, you would never, no one can ever, even in my book, no one will ever hear me speaking bad about Yasmin. Um, no one will find anything on the internet of me speaking bad about that lady because she always been good to me. That's the mother of Gaddafi. He's a friend of mine. You know what I mean? She always been like an aunt. Of course, um, what happened to her son, no one myself i can't imagine what she's going through even now 20 years later that was an only child mm -hmm. but i was able to be able to tell my side that most don't know so i was able to touch up on that in the book surrounded me again they surrounded me oh what's up with you all of this and death row we here to die you don't know death row they had razors in their hands everything they said we here to die these, well, i mm -hmm. guess the, they said we here to die um Gaddafi, the one with the dread oh, the braids <laughs> yeah, yeah. going back the light skin uh, dude. oh yeah rest in peace rest Gaddafi. In peace. Yeah. he said that he said i'm death row i'm here to die boy i said Whoa. that's hard mm -hmm. that was when it got scary a little bit that was the first time my heart was, <laughs> he was like oh this, this i ain't, said this is this serious is real. <laughs> 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 Other leads also run dry. After speaking with officers on the scene, the police's main witness, Yafu Fula, had said he would give a full statement to detectives. But promises to meet with the police are never kept. And two months later, Fula is shot in the back of the head. Yafu Fula's murder is the most troubling because it happened so quickly, and he was the best witness. Without having any witnesses or anyone being able to identify the suspect, it's essentially impossible to solve this thing. Discretion TV. Light them up if you got them. Light them up. To Gaddafi. 25 years later. Let's get it. Shout out to Storm Out Louis Mortals. Machiavelli the Dog. Pour some out if you got them. Pour some out. Gaddafi. Castro. Free Simon, bro. Real talk. Free Simon. Unfortunate incident. The cops were there all night long. There was one witness, Yafa Fula, said that he could identify the shooter. Yafa Fula was an old friend of Tupac's, and he was riding in the car directly behind the one that Tupac and Chuk were in. So he was closer than anyone other than Chuk. Yafa Fula, who was in the front seat with me, was staring out of the window. So he saw the Cadillac before he even approached the car. And he told the police right off, I saw who did it. And it's stunning to think that, okay, he said that and they didn't say, yeah, who is it? But they didn't. They said, okay, we want you to come in and make a statement. And, you know, at some point in the future, they didn't even set a time. Uh, young girls, niggas sleep for much, man. Go wherever, you know, we don't have tracking devices on them. This organized the brothers that put them together. The he'd been part of the Black The night he was gunned down two months like ago in Las Vegas. People had to ask, rap this, and you know what I'm saying? Witness the Chief Fox murder, ain't got nothing to do with that. Well, he just fell a victim to the streets. This Essex County ain't got nothing to do with nothing else. It's just sad that he had to go at 19.
where I'm from. Where I'm from. Police oh shit! Get out! Get out! As far as I'm concerned, whatever, whatever's not with me, I can give a fuck about. Fuck them. If they not with me, you know, I ain't, I ain't mad at them. They fuck with At some point in the future, we're gonna know what I do. Cheese I need, I need no dough The feel of the pop Got my shit poppin' 
nigga, but I see you got an eye for shell shot. Push out the streets to sell block. Block 45 with the tail cop. Fake with jacks by no means. Pocket full of cracks and money stack in my jeans while I'm on your strip. I blow up money in large amounts. My garage full of cars that bounce. Witness and murder on the street is every dollar counts. Polish and pistols, punks panic because they pussy. Not a murderer, but I be the killer as soon as you push. I want it all fucking talk. I, I ask a question that no fire in your sector on the fucking walk by. I want to talk high when it's far fly. I'm a lay clown. Niggas down and they can find me out in all kinds. Push the bomb versus the calm in the panic. As soon as my niggas break the earthquake, the whole planet. Have a separate, can't understand it. The way my niggas strategize. Don't nobody die unless we plan it. Lifelong committed. I write songs, spit it. No matter how hard motherfuckers try, they can't get it. It's West Side, West Side outlaws till we die. Thug life, motherfuckers on the ride and we push the ball right out the gate. Nigga, fuck your side. I'm Louis Mortal, my nigga, but I see you out of eye. Push the ball right out the gate. Nigga, fuck your side. I'm Louis Mortal, my nigga, but I see you out of eye. He, yeah. he said that. He said, I'm death row. I'm here to die, boy. I said, That's oh. hard. Mm -hmm. That was when it got scary a little bit. That was the first time my heart was. He was like, Oh, this, this I ain't. I said, This is this serious. Is real. <laughs> this one in Las Vegas last September, the night rap star Tupac Shakur was killed. A hotel security manager took the stand and she said she did not actually see Knight beat the man up that's seen in this surveillance video. It's very poor quality, obviously. That testimony could save Knight from nine years in prison. And a member of Tupac Shakur's entourage, a witness to the shooting that left the rapper mortally wounded, has himself been killed. The murder on Sunday is further complicating an investigation already hindered by uncooperative witnesses. UPN Sue Keenan has the story. He was a rapper who toured with Tupac Shakur. 19-year-old Yafeu Fula was shot in the head early Sunday morning on the third floor of the housing project where he was visiting his girlfriend. She found him slumped on the hallway floor, said he'd made a joke as he answered the door. He said, yeah, what if there's somebody coming to kill me? And he said, we all started laughing, like, just get the door. And then he came and opened and he came to the door. And then you heard the gunshot. Mm -hmm. Late today, police were holding two juveniles in connection with the murder. And on the streets of Montclair, where the young rapper grew up, friends listened to his music and angrily objected to reports Bula's death was in some way connected to the fact he'd been part of Tupac Shakur's entourage the night he was gunned down two months ago in Las Vegas. People have to ask, rap this, and you know what I'm saying? Witness the Tupac's murder, they ain't got nothing to do with that. Well, he just fell a victim to the streets. This Essex County, it ain't got nothing to do with nothing else. It's just sad that he had to go at 19. <laughs> You know, again, we're talking about a musical artist, uh, a backup band, whatever. I mean, they're very mobile. They're from different parts of the country. And it's not like everybody lives in Las Vegas, so it's going to be easy because they all own a home, and they're all easy to locate. Most of these guys didn't own homes. Uh, they'd go stay at family, friends, whatever. So we would try to get in touch with people, and, and you again, you'd have to go through Death Row Records or whomever to try and, and locate them. Uh, classic example, we ended up getting a lot of press about how Malcolm Greenidge said he could identify the shooter. We finally tracked him down to set up a re-interview, and he says, 
I'm not going to look at any photos because I can't identify them. Yeah, we got beat up in the LA Times over that. Yeah, that's right. I remember you that. know? <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay, put up or shut up, Ace. And, well, he... But, again, Reggie Wright Jr. is the one that brought him to that interview. Ooh. So, and again, other witnesses. Uh, you can say my name. Hmm? You can say my name. Oh, no, I'd, uh, I'm going to another person. Oh. Well, you only... Uh, you can say, say what you want to say about me. Yeah, this is, I, I this is not Frank's friends. story. This yeah. is this okay. is yeah. More, yeah. More well, yeah, and we are. Yeah, we have become friends. Yeah, we have for ten years. Yeah. Uh, other witnesses, though, who have since ended up deceased, you know, that we attempted to talk to that night, refused to talk to us. McDonald uh, didn't have anything he wanted to say to us. Now he's dead. Uh, People that we talked to during an investigation in California, uh, they're dead. I mean, yeah, a lot of people have died that were directly or indirectly linked to this investigation. Uh, again, because witnesses were from all over the country, uh, we'd have to track them down. I mean, initially, we, we went into how people were the first day of this investigation. Uh, Frank Alexander, who was Tupac's bodyguard, who was driving the car behind him, was uh, someone we interviewed. And again, that first night, I don't think he was totally forthcoming on everything he knew. His story basically matched everybody else's. As the investigation progressed and we started getting more information, Frank was re-interviewed, and Frank was very much more forthcoming. In fact, he gave a lot of information that really helped as far as what we were looking at. Uh, it was quite obvious that that information pissed off some people, and uh, and it, people just kind of shut down as far as answering our questions related to that. After speaking with officers on the scene, the police's main witness, Yafu Fula, had said he would give a full statement to detectives. So we have to depend on people that we know we can get in touch with to, go, to try and reach out to them. <laughs> to meet with the police are never kept, and two months later, Fula is shot in the back of the head. Yafu yeah, Fula's murder is the most troubling. <laughs> I want it all fucking talk. I, I, I asked the question, I know why. Statement. And you know, at some point in the future, maybe if it's. I represent the East Coast, connect with Jersey Spiders. We got me to stop me. Ain't a fucking cop in the world to stop me. Lance is being cocky. Lance, come on and talk me. This is all I'm going through. My motherfucking Lord. I can better come to rap. I don't think you should. Nigga, you fool can kill. Motherfucking body can kill. Motherfucking late on ship. When I. Is this Cali World right here? Yes. Yeah. All right, what's up, Cali World? This here Kanabi, our Lloyd Porter. Here on the video set, uh, all about you. On all about you video set, I'm chilling. We got a we got a, we got Snoop here over there. And this here right here, Cash Girl, we another outlaw. We kind of shy, but you know, we get a little bit of that Chris Stabbs. Alan say Thug Cash, a little of that Thug Cash, and you get the, you get, you get the gig. You get the gig. Get him on the get, get him on the camera. That's video soul right there. Oh yeah. Damn, right there, Soul Train, Soul Train, live in action. You enjoy the video? My people's right there, Cash Girl. You know what I'm saying, man? Any shout out? It's not the rappers. The cameraman, right here. <laughs> oh, we got the cameraman. Cameraman want to hit it too. 
I'm from Jersey. I'm from the heart of Jersey. From NEW Jersey, plenty murders occurs. Ball player, ball player, ball player. We got another player, ball player, that boy did. I the only solely represent Montclair right now. So you guys, in actuality, are from the East Coast. Me, I was born in New York. Born in the Bronx. Boogie down. Raised all over. Raised all over. But I'm uh, <laughs> half raised in Jersey, the other half raised in Cali. So I guess that makes me what? A Jersey Cali boy. Cali, that ain't where you're from. I'm talking Where you at? I'm trying to say that. And we ain't gonna fuck with the camera. Remember what Michael X said? The camera gets you every time. So watch y'all block that shit up while y'all performing and shit all in front of the camera. This is my big brother. You know, he happened to get jealous. He happened to get jealous. You a nigga camera and they get loose. The Honorable Elijah Tupac. He happened to get jealous when little bro get a little camera time, but we go, you know what I mean? We'll keep that on us. Valentino.